I'm Terrence James and you're watching another episode of Neutral Reviews where we do real reviews for real decisions and today we are looking at the 2023 Dodge Hornet GT and I have borrowed the keys for this vehicle from Oxford Dodge in London, Ontario who has an amazing new facility, welcoming atmosphere and who also offers some of the most fun and best valued vehicles on the road today including this one. And the Dodge Hornet is all new for 2023 but in SUV form only and what I mean by that is back in the early 1950s Hudson actually slapped that nameplate on the back of one of their performance cars which would later go on to inspire Paul Newman's Doc Hudson character from those popular car movies. Uh, but in the 1970s though AMC took that nameplate and slapped it on the back of one of their hatchbacks. So we should not be shocked then that in 2023 Dodge decided to put this nameplate on the back of a small performance SUV. But what should shock us though is that Dodge believes that this can replace those two. So let's take a look at the facts, feels, and final thoughts of the 2023 Dodge Hornet. Let's take a look. Okay, and Dodge uses their two liter inline four turbocharged uh, engine with direct injection, which is capable of producing 268 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque, which is capable of rocketing this bloated little hatchback from zero to 60 in around six, six and a half seconds. Uh, but they are coming out next year with a plug in hybrid version uh, that is going to be closer to the five second range, if not even a little bit faster uh, for this as well, which will be a 1.3 liter uh, plug in hybrid, as we said, and also give you around 50 kilometers of range, uh, Dodge says. Now this one here, when we talk about fuel economy, it's not plugged in. It is a mile hybrid, I believe, but more or less just to help you with your auto start stop. But it's not bad. You're looking around 30 miles per gallon combined. Uh, high 20s, around 30 for most people. So that's not too bad. You're looking around a 13 and a half gallon gas tank on here. Now all that power keeps on running through their nine speed ZF automatic transmission and keeps on going through their full time all wheel drive system. Now it is front bias, but for a vehicle like that, uh, this is okay because it's not a true sports car. Really, it's a good daily driver for systems like that so you don't oversteer and things like that and get you out of most messes that you're going to get into which leads me to my first performance test which is our accelerating and braking test okay and here's where we do our traffic light grand prix acceleration test like we want to race up to that stop place as fast as we can just to hammer on the brakes here we go okay left foot on the brake we got it in the sport i think we got it in the sport put the sport button Ooh. there you go here we go Ooh, a little slow. oh now it takes off Woo. All right, we're gonna hammer on those brakes. Hold on. Not bad. Pass. So as you saw, this has plenty of pep. No, it's not a Hemi V8 uh, or even, you know, the six cylinder version sometimes of those Challengers uh, or Chargers, but it is a lot of fun uh, and it has plenty of power for day-to-day -day stuff. This is basically the same speed as my GTI. So it is quite zippy and definitely is that type of performance SUV that they're talking about. But you got to steer. Well, it steers, of course, nowadays using uh, an EPS unit uh, for all those fancy safety features and it steers these 17 inch aluminum wheels on here but you can also get upgraded uh, 18 inch wheels as well um, oh sorry these are the upgraded 18s uh, on here but uh, 17s look very similar but you can also get on the performance pack uh, you're going to get Brembo's up front and you're also going to get 20 inch wheels and obviously a bigger wider tire all the way around and we're talking about brakes well these are not Brembo's and those are only Brembo's in the front on the track pack and they're nice and red though all the way around uh, these are not red they're gray two pistons in the front one piston in the rear but they're tuned uh, totally fine it's not that heavy of a vehicle so it does as we saw seem to break uh, just fine and when we talk about suspension well it uses uh, um, independent suspension but it's a little bit different it's going to use strut front and back uh, on this as well uh, but it seems to work pretty good uh, in the handling which we'll test in a second now when it comes also uh, to that when you get that performance pack uh, or even on this GT you do have a sport mode you can on that sport pack get uh, a dual setup uh, for your suspension uh, at the push of a button and also when we're talking about platform this is really interesting actually and impressive uh, another thing that should shock you but in a good way Dodge did not uh, or Solantis Group did not choose to use the uh, Jeep Compass and reskin it uh, for this vehicle here. Instead, they went into their parts catalog and said, oh, 
we're with Alfa Romeo now. Let's use the new Tonali. So this vehicle here is part of the reason why it handles really well. And when we'll see in the inside why it's pretty nice in there is because it is based on that Alfa Romeo. Uh, and when we're looking at that, you're looking at about 103 inch wheelbase. So as we said, it's basically kind of like a bloated hatchback, but you know, it does have an okay amount of space, uh, which we'll test in a second. Um, it's not, I couldn't get a lot of stats on uh, things on this yet. Um, it does, I couldn't get braking on it. Um, but as I said, we saw in the test, it seems like it's okay. As far as the rest of the platform goes, of course, it's a five seater. You got two up front, three in the middle front engine. So it is going to be a little bit front heavy on here. And as far as handling goes with uh, exact numbers, I'm not sure. It's probably floating in around the 0.8 area for uh, G's around that 300 foot skid pad. And again, couldn't get some no definite noise uh, decibel levels on here on the highway. But again, as we'll see when we test it, it does seem fine. Most modern vehicles now, are, even in when I say modern in the last five years or so, are pretty quiet. Uh, so anyway, uh, also what we talk about on this show is can this platform tow? And it can. It can tow 2,000 pounds with your 2023 Dodge Hornet, which is the equivalent to one of these active urban lifestyles hanging off the back of your bloated hatchback. Uh, so let's talk cargo. Okay, let's talk cargo. And uh, we're not even gonna bother dancing on this one because I know there won't be any sensors. Just a normal popper button here somewhere. There we go. And voila, as you can see, you know, this is why I call it a bloated hot hatch because I own a Volkswagen Golf and you know, this has got to be pretty similar to the back of that. Uh, you're looking at around 27 uh, cubic feet of total storage space when these back seats are up and when they're down and fold flat, you're looking over do about double that around 55 cubic feet. So again, not a ton, but again, this is one of the most popular vehicles out there and it's as roomy as any of them, uh, you know, within an inch or two. Uh, so let's get our handy, uh, neutral reviews comment cam here uh, and start seeing what I see. So let's come around here. Um, you're looking, you do, ooh, look at that. Nice, full spare and jack and everything else. You do have these nice tie downs uh, here. You have some more over here. You do have a 12 uh, volt plug there. Uh, some more grocery bag hangers and types of things like that. You do have this nice convenient cover so you can hide all your goodies uh, and things like that. But if you do need a little bit more space for some long things, I think we might have a test coming up. Uh, you do have a pass-through here, which is nice. And uh, as you can see, those seats as well are 60-40 uh, split. So this leads me to my first exterior test. Okay, it's time for a Canadian cargo test because you never know when a game of road hockey is gonna break out in Canada and you always wanna be prepared. So here we go. We already put down that uh, pass-through and we slide our stick in there and voila! You can take your hockey stick, at least one medium-sized bag, and still have two people. So hopefully only one of them plays hockey. <laughs> Pass. So as you can see, it's got uh, plenty of power, uh, brakes well, accelerates well, and you can put things in it. So before we test out the inside of this and give you our final thoughts to take it for a final drive, let's do one more uh, test, our handling test. Okay, so here's where we do our uh, highway and handling test. We're gonna see how this goes over some bumps. So here we go, over some train tracks, and not bad. Not too bad at all, actually. Um, there's some road noise in here for sure. Um, with the tires and things like that, but not too bad. Again, like it's a modern car, so it's going to be pretty quiet. It just perspective wise, it's not as quiet as some cars, uh, you know, that focus on that. This is more going for a little bit uh, sporty of a feel. And I think it does a pretty good job of that. When we talk about that, let's go here for some handling because it's a highway and handling test. So we got a big uh, corner here. So it's not official highway, but uh, you know, it's a back county road, so you can get going pretty good. So here we go. We're giving some gusto. We're in sport. Oh. All right, that holds nice, really nice. As you can see, wow, really, really nice. Absolutely, holds tight, um, very, very sporty, but even just, oh, we'll give it some gusto here to another tight corner. Yeah, see that handles really, really well, really, really well. Yeah, even just day-to-day -day handling, uh, it's, it goes over bumps really nice, yet it still feels firm and sporty, definitely uh, pass. So as you can see, this handles just fine. Uh, again, on day-to-day -day stuff, this is actually pretty sporty. No, it's not as sporty as my GTI because it's a, a little bit higher and things like that and a little bit heavier. But all in all, for a small little uh, SUV like this, it is pretty zippy and it does handle well. And on day-to-day -day stuff, yeah, you got plenty of handling. Uh, it's just fine and it feels great. Uh, let's move into the back. 
Okay, testing out the back of the new 2023 Dodge Hornet. So coming back here on the GT model or the base, it does come pretty well equipped nowadays, uh, all things considered. But again, it's pretty basic compared to that GT Plus. So not a lot going on back here. As you can see, you do, though, have a nice USB-C and USB plug-in. Uh, you do have a little bit of airflow back here, which is nice. And of course, you do have these uh, map pockets. And as you can see, these seats are an interesting... Uh, uh, texture. I really like them. They're pretty sporty uh, for a cloth seat. They look pretty durable, uh, easy to clean, things like that. They hold you in pretty good. Uh, yeah, they're really nice seat. Uh, very comfortable back here. I do have a fair amount of leg room, as you can see here. I'm five foot seven, 150 pounds. This seat here is comfortable for me as a driver, and I don't like to have uh, myself too close to the steering wheel. Um, and again, even with my spiky-ish hair here, I still have a little bit of room, even if I lean back, which isn't too bad, again, for any type of hatch back or a smaller SUV so not bad there definitely um, and as you can see here um, I definitely have a pretty good visibility back here I don't feel like I would throw up uh, anytime soon sometimes when you're in smaller vehicles like this and you can't see out quite well uh, that can happen but yeah all in all not too bad we do have two uh, cup holders one in this door and one on the other uh, which leads me uh, to my first test okay here we go can we be cool in the back of this thing Oh, the anticipation. <sighs> Pass fail. I can still hang it out. Not bad. Okay, can I put my baby seat in the back of my new Dodge Hornet? Because that is still cool as well. All right, here we go. Voila! We can take our baby and our brand new Dodge Hornet. Pass. Okay, we're on the inside of our new Dodge 2023 Hornet GT. So as we said, this is the base model uh, in here, but it does have the upgraded cold weather package. So we got a heated steering wheel, heated front seats, which is nice, things like that. Uh, but realistically in here, we always like to start off with the steering wheel. And as you can see, this is a nice little sporty steering wheel. It feels good in the hand. I do like that they still have uh, plastic buttons on here. And ooh, sport button, nice. I uh, wonder what that does. So let's hold that button down and I have no, ooh, look at that. Changes the gauges. And we might as well talk about the gauges while we're here. Uh, so as you can see, beautiful digital gauges on here. Really, really nice. Um, I don't know if that is part of the Solantis using the Alfa Romeo or what, but those are pretty nice. Uh, see if I can scroll through here with some of these buttons. Um, I don't see a ton changing. Well, there you go. You can scroll through some certain things here. As you see, you got a G meter, um, some basic information, your driving systems on there. Um, it does look like things are changing over here when I hit that button, but I'm not 100% sure. So if I go like that, that changes that. I don't know, but they look nice. That's all I know. Um, and when we talk about the steering wheel, it is telescopic, and tilting manual. It's still nice. Um, nice to have. And we're talking about adjustment. What about these seats? We mentioned before about the texture. They're nice, uh, durable, sporty looking uh, for cloth. I do like it. They're very bolstered, kind of tiny seats. I think if you're a really big person, either tall or wide, I don't know how much you would like it in here. But for, uh, let's say, average size type people, uh, they're quite nice, these seats. Uh, they feel good, sporty. They look nice, as I said. Nothing wrong with them at all. Uh, and what else to talk about? Well, it's an automatic transmission, so we don't have any three pedals. We don't have any shifter to really talk about uh, as far as engagement pieces go. But um, what I do see here is two cup holders. Let's take a peek at those. Ooh, yep. Yeah, so not bad. Uh, and over here, we do have my water bottle in the door pocket. We'll just make sure it fits over here. Um, okay. Oh, that's a tighter squeeze than I was expecting, actually, because it's a pretty skinny water bottle. But that's nice. It doesn't rattle around. Uh, and over there, as you can see, uh, my camera is on this part over here, but you do have a small little spot in there that you can open up to put stuff in. Of course, you got actually a pretty decent sized glove compartment. That's nice. Um, and then you have this big spot here, but ooh, that looks like it's for a cell phone. So this leads me to my first test. Does the charger, wireless charger, actually work in this thing? Let's take a look. Okay, let's do our uh, first test here. Can I plug in my phone in this? wireless charger. I don't even know if it's a wireless charger. It looks like it is, but it probably is only on the GT Plus. But let's give it a try. Fail. <laughs> or pass, because they're not offering it. 
Okay, and we're back. So, uh, one of the other things that we want to talk about uh, in here as well is the fact that, like we said, it's pretty basic, but I do like uh, that they do have still have hard buttons on here and everything really looks nice. And I don't know if that is because they've, as we said, uh, when we're talking about the platform, that they've used the Tonali, the Alfa Romeo, because it definitely does feel good when the door is shut, things like that, but the materials look pretty nice. I mean, the dash on the top here does look a little bit like a Dodge, no offense, uh, but this leather here is really nice. All these uh, aluminum looking type uh, trims they feel really nice and expensive in the hands and I'm sure the Tonali has a nicer upper half than that the same with the doors things like that it's kind of a mixed bag in here of materials to be honest with you there's like kind of reminds me of my BRZ you've got some nice materials but you also have some not so nice materials in here um, yeah what else to talk about as we said hard buttons in here all works good we don't have to get into a lot of that uh, but it does have this upgraded nice looking um, I wouldn't say upgraded, as in like this vehicle has a nice, compared to what Dodge is usually putting out, this is a, a really nice looking screen. Looks very Alfa Romeo type looking screen. Sharp, crisp, as you can see. I like the way it's widescreen. Um, the bezels are pretty thick, but just the way that the graphics are and things like that, it, it does look pretty nice and expensive. Um, I believe you have to get up to the GT Plus if you want uh, navigation built in, but I'm assuming um, that this has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Look on the screen there. Uh, I'll make sure when this video is edited, but I would imagine so. I would hope so. Um, and uh, actually, let's try that. It leads me to my next test. Can I plug in my phone at least and use my Apple CarPlay? Here we go. Okay, let's do our Apple CarPlay test. Obviously, we just found out it doesn't seem to have wireless charging. Uh, at least it didn't work anyway. Uh, so let's plug this thing in. Uh, to see if we got Apple CarPlay. Okay, I'll put it over there. Oh, pass. I was concerned. Uh, that's great. You can at least use your Apple CarPlay in your base, so you don't necessarily need navigation. Pass. Okay, so let's try the rest of this thing out. So we got home, media, comfort, phone, vehicle. That's just for fun. What's vehicle all about? Hmm, not a lot going on in here. You can get upgraded cameras in that GT Plus. Basically, the thing that I like about Dodge is, with at least with the Hornet anyway, basically the GT and the GT Plus, you can equip almost the same. You can get the track pack and you get heated seats and all these things. Uh, but really, what you're going to get with that Plus is everything that you would ever get with the GT plus those nicer seats. Uh, Alcantara when I say that if you get the track pack um, or leather uh, you're going to get a sunroof and the Harman Kardon uh, stereo as well uh, and that navigation but in here like I said it looks pretty good at least they give you the nice screen some of these companies are given like an old screen and things like that it just drives me bonkers but uh, yeah I mean it does seem to work pretty good uh, very responsive intuitive things like that uh, just to give you a good idea here it has you know when I touch on it like that things like that now you can as you can see work some of these things uh, through either here or the touch screen it's totally up to you um, I do like the fact that uh, they give you the option now, there's certain things here it appears like your heated seats and heated steering wheel are buried unfortunately uh, in here but uh, you know uh, depending on where you live and the climate uh, you know and things like that not everybody is going to use those so it's probably not that big of a deal but if you do use it all the time I'm sure that could be a little bit frustrating um, nowadays electronic parking brake boo but this isn't a true performance vehicle and what they've done also they put this here which is a scroll reel for your volume and things like that so again at first I was like oh no you know it's a touch screen it works good but where's your you know like Honda had to go and put that uh, at least one button on there or turn uh, dial and they've just put theirs down here which is nice so it actually works good and feels good you go up and down the volume you can mute it with one touch or hold it down to shut the whole thing off um, yeah so what else to talk about in here yes you know we do have our uh, vanity mirrors do they light up Ooh, yep yeah, nice um, yeah pretty basic in here and let's just take a quick look at your visibility so not too bad at all for a smaller vehicle. I do feel safe in here with the thicker looking pillars, uh, but there is also a lot of greenhouse uh, space and visibility, especially if you get that GT Plus with the sunroof. So let's quit yakking about the facts because everybody probably just wants to know how this thing uh, drives. Okay, here's where we do our rants, raves, uh, and price in comparison leading us to our final thought. So price, as you can see in the screen there, not bad nowadays. Starts around 40000 which is a little pricey. Uh, Canadian plus fees and taxes. But again, you are getting a Tenali uh, and you are getting a lot of equipment for that. And 
really some good craftsmanship. Um, now you can get that GT Plus uh, with about $6,000 more, I believe. So around $45,000, $46,000 Canadian. And if you load that one right up with the track pack and uh, you know all that type of stuff there's not too many options on that but for sure um, and you know a safety uh, pack and things like that you're going to get up to around 55 56 000. so again pretty well equipped it's very expensive but again it's a very nice vehicle when we're talking about competition well i mean it's the sea of suv right and this is one of the most popular well saturated <laughs> uh, segments so i mean we go here all day but i would say realistically if you're looking for something nice uh, and sporty um, you're going to probably be looking at two different vehicles. You're probably going to be looking at your uh, Hyundai Kona N. Yes, it's front wheel drive. Yes, it's more of a crossover uh, than this, but it's very similar in size and it is that sportiness that you might be looking for. And you're probably not going to take advantage of that front or all wheel drive very often. Um, so on the other end of that spectrum, you know, there, uh, if you're looking for something nice, it's going to handle just a tiny bit better than this maybe and be just a little bit nicer on the inside and a very similar size and type of a vehicle would be that Mazda uh, CX-50 that we did a review on. Uh, again, so I think those are probably going to be your closest ones. Now, when we talk about rants and raves, I mean, the rant that I have is the fact that this is supposed to replace the Challenger and Charger. Yes, I know we have the new... Uh, Challenger coming out uh, that's electric, but it's not the same. Um, it's going to be pretty cool for an electric vehicle, sure, but it's still not the same. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it just, I. That is my rant. Is I have a GTI for a reason. I know I mention all the time at nauseum, but part of the reason is I would rather have. Like that, that car is approximately around the same price, give or take, right? It's approximately around the same size. And what I mean by that, this is my, I'm going on my soapbox here, but I mean, realistically, you're not going to be able to fit more than maybe an inch here and there on any side in the cargo. So you're not going to be able to put a second stroller or your stroller and some groceries or things like that. So for me, to be up that little bit higher, which for me, I don't feel that much safer, especially with all the larger vehicles nowadays. I'd rather have something a little bit more nimble uh, and cool, if you will. And this is pretty cool, but I mean, like to me, a hot hatch is, is cooler than this or the Kona N, but that's my own opinion. Uh, but if I am to be fair and I want to um, rave about this, you know, if this is the way the world is going for small SUVs, it's very nice. And again, we'll just mention that Tenali in here. Um, you know, when I worked for Chrysler, that was when they merged with uh, Mercedes. And again, they utilized that Mercedes technology. So the 300 at the time was basically, I believe, a C-Class Mercedes platform. So you were getting 10-year-old technology for a Chrysler, but it was far ahead of anything else that the Met 6 had. And I, I feel that this is very similar uh, with this here, uh, which leads me uh, to my final thoughts. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, and check out one of our other small SUV reviews so we can get more cool cars like this one and our upcoming review. Now, we start off this review by looking to put the facts against the feels for the all-new 2023 Dodge Hornet GT. And here's the facts and feels that we use to come up with this final thought. Which is, if you are in the market for a bloated hot hatch or a nice little SUV that's going to be zippy, sporty, have a decent amount of space, be pretty good on fuel and a reasonable price for nowadays, I really don't think that you can go wrong with the new 2023 Dodge Hornet. As we said in the competition, yes, your Mazda CX-50 is going to probably ride just a little bit better than this and be just a little bit more upscale but just a little bit uh, and then that honda kona and or hyundai kona n is of course going to be a tiny bit smaller than this front wheel drive but maybe be that more zippiness and sportiness that you're looking for but if you're looking for somewhere right down the middle as we said you can't go wrong with the new 2023 dodge hornet gt and hopefully we'll be able to review that plug-in hybrid when it comes out soon thanks for watching we'll see you again next time